So in this video, I'm bringing you step three of my seven step process to really understand your finances and to build wealth. See, the idea is that um, you can make a lot of money, but you can also spend it all. And then where do you end up? You have nothing to show for all the money that you've made. Turning income into wealth is key. And that's what will give you the chance to be able to retire independently or to retire early and or even just retire at all. And so I hope that you'll take the time to go through each of these steps. And this one is step three. We're going to talk about the importance of saving. Saving is a foundational uh, step towards everything else that you're going to do. You need to have an emergency fund and you need to have the habit of saving because that gives you the ability to manage your money more effectively and then work towards the rest of the next steps that we're going to go. These steps are all in order. This is step three of the seven step process. If you've missed the last two, I'll put them up here and I'll give you the opportunity to go back and watch those. But this one is standalone. You can watch this one without having watched those ones, but um, there's some things I might reference here and I'll do my best to kind of make sure that it makes sense. So my name is Paris Clough and this is my channel, Financial Self-Reliance. I love helping people manage, protect, and grow their money. And that's exactly one of the things that we're going to talk about today is being proactive about your finances. See, a lot of times people are reactive with their finances and that means that they, they earn their money and then all the bills come in and then they spend it all. And, and sometimes in order to get anything or do anything or things that they want, they'll go borrow and they'll go get into debt. Well, with this particular step is step three, because the first step is getting your mindset right. The second step was getting your budget in order and getting your budget in place. And now that we have our budget in place, now that you're spending less, hopefully than the amount of money that you're making, that you'll have some of that opportunity now to proactively start to save money for the things that you want to buy in the near future. So let's talk about proactive savings. So the first step here, I want to talk. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is show you this neat quote. And this quote here is the ability to discipline yourself to delay gratification in the short term in order to enjoy greater rewards in the long term is the indispensable prerequisite for success. That's Brian Tracy. I highly recommend that you learn that that, that discipline is going to get you where you want to go. Discipline is the first step towards freedom, whether that's financial freedom, emotional freedom, or any other kind of freedoms. You have to discipline yourself. And by, by disciplining yourself, you start to control everything that happens in your life a little bit more effectively and efficiently. There's, there's no way we can control everything, but discipline at least gives us a chance. So the first real three areas around savings are these. One, emergency fund. This is what I call your midterm money. Short-term savings is uh, money for uh, that you're going to save to buy things now. And so there's three components of a savings plan. There's emergency fund money, short-term savings, and long-term savings. And we're going to get into each one of these. So short-term savings is money that you set aside for things that you want to buy in the near future. So let's say that you want to buy something in the next 30, 60, or 90 days, and you're going to save up money in order to buy that. So if you know how much it costs today and you have a budget of a certain dollar amount, you know it's going to take you maybe three months, maybe six months, depending on the, the cost and depending on your budget. Save up for things first. Don't put it on a credit card and then pay for it later. Don't buy today things that you're going to pay for tomorrow. Save up first, get your money in your savings account, and then go buy the things that you want. The other things is that uh, short-term savings is for things that you're actually going to be buying in the near future or in within a year or so. Um, sinking funds are a very popular thing for a lot of people where they'll have a sinking fund for Christmas, they'll have a sinking fund for birthdays, they'll have a sinking fund for a car that they want to buy or a TV or some item that they're going to be buying. What that means is a sinking fund is a separate savings account that's just for that. So you put in a, every month, you put in a certain dollar amount just for that one item or that one thing that you're going to do and you're saving for. Maybe you're saving for a vacation. And so your sinking fund is for your vacation next year. So you know exactly how much it's going to cost to go on vacation. You have the budget for it. And every month you're putting money towards it so that when that vacation comes up, you already have the money ready to go and you just pay for it with the cash you already have in savings. I highly recommend that you put this money into what's called a high yield savings account. And I have a link in the description below for one of my favorites, which is prize pool. Another one of my favorites is Yada and M1 finance actually just stepped up to the plate and they created a fantastic um, savings account as well. So that's something that you can do, but I highly recommend you click the link in the description below and check out prize pool. That's one of my favorites, honestly. So the next thing here is, an emergency fund. An emergency fund, in my opinion, is more of a midterm fund because we never know when an emergency is going to happen. It needs to be liquid. It needs to be e equal to at least six months of your income or your essential living expenses. 
Um, what I highly recommend you start with is in budgeting. If you remember back in the budgeting module in, in uh, video two, and, and I think it's probably the last video that I did. So uh, you can go back and look at that. In budgeting, we talked about fixed expenses and variable expenses. I personally believe that if you're going to build an emergency fund up to six months, you should start with your fixed expenses first and make sure you have at least six months of those. And then once you have that, then you can start adding to your emergency fund to get to your six months of uh, variable expenses. Because the six months of variable expenses, they can they, they can be fudged a little bit. You can kind of, um, if you don't want to, for example, if you lose your job, the idea of an emergency fund, by the way, was that if you lost your job, you'd have enough money to continue to live comfortably until you find a new job. And most people take, you know, the average is about six months or so to find a new job. So that's why it's a, a six months of what you're, uh, of savings to, to have as an emergency fund. Now, are there, is that the only emergency? No. Sometimes you have an emergency where you've got to pay the de full deductible on your medical bill, uh, medical insurance. Sometimes it's the full deductible on your car insurance. So, or maybe there's an accident that happens and you have a, a, an issue there. So I highly recommend that you get at least six months and then kind of build a cushion into that in case. If you're in a situation where you're in sales, you might move that out to nine months or 12 months, depending on if you have a really bad year, depending on the career that you've chosen and the career that you're in. Um, it might be shorter to find a job, but I, I, I still recommend six months. And um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. This, this actually should also be in a high yield savings account. The reason why is because you don't want it in the stock market where it might fluctuate so much so that you're have when the emergency hits you're, you're in a down market and you don't have the six months because it was in a volatile market that uh that diminished your balance so having it in a high yield savings account gives you the ability to at least keep track or get as close as possible to inflation but then also um have it accessible like liquid like you can get it if you need it have it i highly recommend having your emergency fund connected to a credit card or a debit card or some kind of checking or savings account that you can actually just quickly write the check, swipe the card and get things done that you need to have done. So again, price pool is a great thing that I've used for my emergency fund, Yada Savings as well, um, M1 Finance. I just have, you know, if you want to look at my channel and do a little bit of search about each one of those, you'll see how I've used them in each one of their, uh, each of the ways that I use those particular accounts. So highly recommend that you take a look at that. But you definitely want to have an emergency fund. Now, um, I highly recommend that this is kind of your your first thing you want to do before you invest money, before you start doing things, get your emergency fund started. So here's an, a calculation that I've used uh, to help people calculate their emergency fund. So um, start with the fixed expenses and then expand that to variable, which we already talked about. The average person takes one month per $10,000 of desired income to find a new job. So if the job, if you want a job that pays $50,000 per year, you need to allow five months to find that job. So if you're in a position where you're making $100,000 a year, it might take you 10 months to find that job. So that's where it's important for you to have um, 10 months now of saving. So the, the more you make, the more I recommend that you put towards your emergency fund. Now, the more you make, the more you should have available to put towards your emergency fund if you're doing it right. So hopefully you'll, you've figured out um, how to have and why to have an emergency fund. It's critical. I, I highly, it's critical to have an emergency fund. Um, so long-term savings is a big deal because long-term savings now starts to get you into the point where you're going to be able to have uh, an opportunity for retirement. Now, long-term savings, in my opinion, is also related to investing. Um, investing, though, can be uh, for income. Investing can be a business, could be real estate, could be a stock market. So long-term savings or long-term it should be in those types of things that will bring you 10, 20, 30, or 40 years down the road, an income that will give you the lifestyle so that you can retire from your nine to five or your full-time work and be able to have enough money to live comfortably in your retirement. Now, a lot of people want to really go for it and retire early. Well, that's fine, but you're going to have to live very frugally in order to make sure that the money that you're making is able to be saved in a long-term savings account that's earning a decent rate of return so that you can actually grow and compound that to a, a balance big enough that you can actually live comfortably off of that balance when you do retire. So highly recommend that you look at your long-term savings as part of your savings plan, but it actually does bleed into the investment uh, part of your and, and retirement accounts, which we'll talk about more in step six. So this is an introduction to that long-term savings opportunity. So here's what I say. If you have money um, that is in your budget for savings, I would first fill up your emergency fund. Get that thing as full as possible. 
then get that um, get that money into some, then split up some money into sinking funds that you're going to be able to buy right away so that you don't get into debt because you're not using your credit card. You're going to actually have savings. And then have your long-term savings there. If you fill up your emergency fund, like let's say that you get your six months worth of expenses and it's full, let that thing grow and, and hopefully you don't need to draw from it and use it. And now the money that you were putting into that emergency fund, you can double down on long-term savings. You can put that into your long-term savings and add it to the what you're saving for your retirement. And maybe you can have your retirement come a little sooner. But then when you um, pull from your emergency fund, because you've had an emergency, make sure to take that 250 back and put it to, or whatever dollar amount you have, take it back and put it towards your emergency fund. Hopefully that makes sense that once you have enough, once your emergency fund is full, don't need to continue to fund it because that money can now be used at, in your long-term savings or can be used towards your sinking funds to be able to buy the things that you want without having to go into debt to get them. So here's one of the things I highly recommend that you do is every month. I know in the budgeting video that we did, uh, which I'll um, put a link in here as well for you, um, that bit video, uh, talked about the cash flow and that when you earn an income, the first thing you should do is save or, or pay yourself first. And that's what I'm talking about here on this slide is that you need to save yourself, save every time you get paid, take 10% of your income and put it towards your savings, put it, pay you, pay yourself, make you one of your bills and your future. You actually is really what it ends up being. Make your future. You one of your bills and that you pay every month so that you don't you know, in, in 10 or 15 years, you actually have enough money that you could be comfortable and you can retire or whatever, however long it is, whatever your time frame is for retirement, make sure that you're funding your retirement as fully as you can. Now, I highly recommend that you take a look at your retirement age that you want and the age you are right now, and then calculate exactly how many dollars that you want to have, and then backtrack that to how much money you need to invest every month. And we'll talk more about that again in the retirement uh, slide, but uh, or the in retirement video that we do in a couple weeks. So here's the best way to increase your positive cash flow is to learn to live within your means, which we talked about in uh, video number. Uh, so the ways to increase your positive cash flow is learn to live within your means and then increase your means. Find some way to make more money if you need to. So for example, um, you can only cut back your expenses so far, but you really need to learn how to make more money. If, that's, if that means you can get a promotion at work or maybe you can get a side hustle, whatever it is, learn how to make more money. I hope this video helps you understand. I hope this video helps you understand the importance of saving money for the, for the future, saving money for your future self, paying yourself first, getting into those three categories of savings, emergency fund money, short-term savings, and long-term savings. Make sure that you're saving money. It's a foundation towards financial success. It's a huge step in the right direction. Savings builds confidence. And I hope this video helped you learn why you should save more money and build that confidence. If you like, if you uh, if you missed the last video I produced, go ahead and check. If you missed the last video I produced, go ahead and check it out here. Check this, uh, subscribe to the channel up here and check out this video that YouTube thinks you might like. Have a fantastic day.